So what I have open here, this is actually the Word document version of, you guys have a PDF in your weekly content for this week about parent functions. And um, so if you open that up, you see this, and this is just the Word document version. And with each of it, I go, I, there's a part that talks about the transformations. And so that's the part that I'm going to be demonstrating is the transformation part for each of these parent functions. And so to do that, I'm going to be working with Desmos quite a bit. So I'm going to pull that up. And so we're going to start with linear functions. Just so, and then I'm going to position this so that way we can see both. We can see the transformation part and the, and the graph. So uh, the linear function, the parent function is just y equals x, which is called the identity function because every number that you put in, you get the same number out. And so um, it doesn't change any numbers. So this is what the identity function looks like. The types of transformations you can do an identity function are um, shifts, of left to right or up and down, and then you can also scale it. So the scale is what happens when you have the slope. So the slope scales it or kind of stretches your graph out. So if I put a number in front of my x, like 5, it's now made the graph narrower. You can think of it as it's pulling the graph up. I'm actually going to make a slider here. So if I just call it A, there's a slider, and as a gets larger, the graph gets sort of stretched up. It's like it's you're pulling the end so that it's going up and up and up and up. So that's why we call this a stretch for the transformation. That number in front of x stretches the graph up. And then as that number gets smaller and as it's getting towards like um, small, it kind of flattens out. If that number goes negative, it's a reflection. It basically turns it upside down. So if I remove the slider for now, if our normal graph is y equals x, and if I make a negative in front of there, it now turns it upside down, it reflects it. And so any negative that you have in front of your x value for your graph or in front of your parent function is a reflection. It reflects it upside down across the x-axis. And then that number in front just stretches it up or down. So if it's a negative, the more negative it goes, it's a stretch. It gets very, very narrow. And then the less negative it is, it flattens out until it goes positive and it kind of flip-flops. Now the other transformation that happens is a shift up or down when you have a constant function. So that's when you add a number so right now, I'm going to add a slider for B. So B, if it's nothing, if it's zero, we don't have anything added, and it's just going through the origin. When you add a number to your function, it makes your graph go up. So you can see how now the y-intercept is changing. So it's going higher. So it's a shift up when it's positive, and then when it's negative, it's shifting down. And you can see that it kind of looks like the graph is moving left or right as well, which is special for the linear function. So um, it's sort of both. It's sort of a move left or right and up and down sort of at the same time when you're looking at lines. But we generally refer to that number that's added as a shift up or down, and you're looking at sort of where that y-intercept is, and the y-intercept is moving up and down. So when you have a linear function, those are the two types of transformations you have. So the one that I have labeled as m, the slope scales it, or it's so it's a stretch. It basically makes your numbers larger or smaller, so that's what I mean by scaling. And then what's added on, the plus b, shifts it up or down. So do you guys have any questions about a um, linear function and how the transformations work? No. Okay, Davis, do you have a question? Yeah, um, I have a question to uh, to write uh, those kind of uh, numbers on a, to make a graph. So you just type in numbers because I've never used that website. Yes, yeah. For Desmos, you just literally type in the equation and then it will graph it. So if you had a linear equation, 
Um, and we could even use function notation. So if it said f of x equals 3x minus or plus, as I hit the plus, plus 6, and then it will, you type that in, and then that's the purple one. So you can match the color here, and then that's the purple graph. So it graphs it for you. So what is the red one? That is the, the, this is the AX plus B, the one that I was doing transformations on. Oh, okay. So, so I can click that, and then that turns it off, and then you see only the other graph that I, I turned in, that I typed. All right. Thank you. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to turn that off. Um, so that's, that's the linear transformations. So the next type of parent function we have is a quadratic, which is x squared. And those transformations I have a lot more notes on, a little more complicated, because there's a lot more things going on there. So um, let's just, there we go. So you can at least see the graph. OK. So it says g of x. g of x is the same thing as y. So I can just type in y equals. And so the parent function is x squared. So this makes what we call a parabola. And so it is, we call it, say that this is opening up. And this would be, if you're looking at the transformations, it'd be like you put parentheses around the x part. That's basically the same sort of thing. So I'm going to just leave those parentheses around the x part right now. So let's start with a, the number in front. So if I put a number in front of that x squared part, it's a stretch or a shrink, just like with the linear. So if that number in front, the a, gets bigger, you can see once again it's getting narrower, like you're pulling the two ends up higher and higher and getting them closer together. And then as a gets smaller, it gets, it's sort of, um, let's see, I can change. Let's step by smaller amounts here. So it gets a little, a little wider here as you move. So as you get a number between 0 and 1, it widens the graph from where it was originally. And A also acts with the reflection just like you did with the linear, where if that number is negative, it goes upside down. So if I move this, it's now upside down. So now you have a negative, and so it's upside down. But once again, it's kind of wide, but as it gets more and more negative, it narrows out. So we generally say if the number is between 0 and 1, it shrinks it because it sort of widens it out. So it's like you're smushing your, your endpoints flatter. And then if it's that A value, if you ignore the sign, is greater than 1, then that's a stretch because it's making it narrower. So this is where we're kind of smushing it, and then we're making it narrower, so we're stretching it out. And then the sign, whether it's positive or negative, de determines basically if you're opening up or down. And we call that negative a reflection. The next kind of transformation happens to the x. So um, we use h and k generally in these cases instead of a and b. So I'm going to just start with minus h here. And h defaults to 0. So if it's going to be 0, um, and let's just make a 1 so we're not doing anything here. So when h is 0 and a is 1, we haven't changed anything. Our graph is just the basic parent function. But if I start adding values, if I start making h bigger, it's moving my graph to the right. So our form is x minus h, which is what I have right here, x minus h. And it moves your graph to the right, and it moves your graph to the left. It depends on the sign. And it's the opposite of the sign. So if you have x minus a number, it moves it to the right. So like here, this would be x minus 3 inside those parentheses. So it moves it to the right by 3 units. So you can see what used to be at 0, 0 is now at 3. So the origin is where we start when we have a parent function. And then now it's here. Um, so we've moved it over to 3 comma 0. If you have something in parentheses that's x plus a number, which is if you're subtracting a negative, so here if you had x plus 
2.8 because you're subtracting negative 2.8. That moves it to the left. So when you have transformations and you have something that's happening to x, if it says x plus a number, it's shifting left by that many units. And if it says x minus a number, you're shifting right by that many units. So that's just a shift left or right, and then the number tells you how much it moved over. Now we have this. Yeah. How do you graph these on Desmos? Is like you just put in your function, and then whatever's below that will equal the 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 uh, the parts of that function. Yeah. So I put in if you put in a variable or a letter, and it doesn't, it's not x or y. It'll ask you if you want a slider, and then if you say yes, that gives you a slider, a variable that you can move around. Otherwise, you can just type it exactly as you see it on. So if we had g of x equals two and then in parentheses x plus 3, and then it was squared. Oops. To get the exponent, you hit the button above the 6. Then it will graph it, so that one's in blue. So all you have to do is literally type in the equation that they give you. And so you can see that this is x plus 3, so moved it over 3 units to the left. Well, let me set my... my h at zero there. So the parent function is in black and it moved our gra graph three to the left and then because of the two in front it also made it narrower. But all you have to do to graph these is just type them in. All right, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. I got one more question. Can you print these out like she said on our assignment for this week that we have to graph something and use a website for it or something like that to, gra to graph these? Can we print these out? To yeah, you can take a screenshot. There's also this button that says share graph. And um, it, you'll want to do is export an image. And then you can download it and print it out if you want. Or you can just upload it separately or if you have it on a Word document. Or you can just copy it by hand, what it looks like, and then put it on paper. OK, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. So going back to um, the function transformations here for this quadratic, the last thing that I have is this plus k. So I'm going to type in plus k here. Um, I don't need caps lock. And then it says add a slider. So I'm going to add a slider so it allows me to move it. And so it starts at 0 when we have a parent function. And that plus k, like with the, the linear equation, if you're adding anything, or subtracting anything from a graph, it moves it up and down. So that k, you can see this makes it makes it much more clear when you see a parabola, is that k gets larger, it's moving it up. And then when k gets negative, it's moving it down. So if you see a number that's added on, then it's shifting it up by that many units. So if it's if it had like plus one, it shifted it up by one. And then if you see like minus four, that means it shifted it down by four. So that value that's added on or um, subtracted from the function is just shifting it up and down. So if I so if I make this back to the default, so that we have our parent function which is in black, and then if I go back to that blue one that I had, so if I, if you saw this and had this minus 2, and you were asked to explain the transformations, well, you would say, OK, I have a number that's added to x, so that means I'm doing the opposite subtracting. I'm moving it left. So I'm moving it left by 3. Then I'm stretching it by 2, because that's the number in front that's multiplied. And then we are shifting down, because it's negative by 2, because we got this minus 2 at the end. So that's how you would describe the transformations. And you can see on the picture that if I start here at 0, 0, I'm moving left 3, I got narrower, and then I moved down 2. And that's the new uh, vertex location here. So turning that off, and then going back. The next kind of parent function is cubic. So this is what it looks like when you just have a regular cubic function. We go back up a little bit. I didn't see that range. And uh, you don't really know, need to know the range as much. This is just saying on the 
the range is like what are the y values and so it's either going to be starting from that k value and going up or going from negative to that k value depending on if it's uh, flipped upside down but the the range part's not so not really as um, important and it's just like okay if it, if you were asked to find like increasing or decreasing intervals you would just say okay what is my number that i have for h okay plug it in here those are my answers um, this the the range the increasing decreasing that's a little more important once you there are some questions about it but you can also figure it out on the graph um, but you'll also see that when you get to pre-calc if you have to take pre-calc yes i do thank you mm -hmm. okay so going back to the cubic and also um, i didn't for the cubic it's always going to be um, your range is always going to be negative uh, whoops that should say negative infinity negative infinity to infinity domain negative infinity to infinity so it doesn't really it's always increasing or decreasing if it's negative so you don't have to worry about that too much it's going to look almost the same as a quadratic it's just the exponent now is um, three instead of two so all I have to do is then go to Desmos and I can highlight that and make that a three so that is what the cubic looks like but all the transformations work exactly the same way so that h that moves it left or right if we're subtracting some number it's moving it to the right and then if it's adding a number it's going to the left so all of that works exactly the same the k moves it up and down so that works exactly the same as well and then a that number that's multiplied in front it makes it go narrower or it goes wider and then if it goes negative it flips it upside down so the transformations are exactly the same even though it's a different the thing looks different so we had our quadratic here that had a 2 but the transformations are exactly the same so if I made that a 3 um, and I, if I put these back at the default oops and then this needs to be one so our parent function is in black and I changed that sample that I had I changed it so now it's cubic it's still moved left three and down two and then it got narrower so the the transformations that happened were exactly the same transformations that happened if it was squared um, it just has a different basic shape but what happens to it is the same and that's the key with transformations is you need to determine first what is the parent function and that's going to be where you're starting with if it has an exponent of two the parent is a quadratic if it has an exponent of three the parent is a cubic um, and when you graph it you can also use the shape here to determine the parent function what has the same shape so here the shape matches this so that means the parent function is cubic and then the transformation rules are the same no matter what function you're starting with it still shifts left or right or up and down so transformations are really not that bad the hardest part is just determining what the parent function is and you can do that by just determining okay um, what is the exponent or you can graph it to see what picture it matches are there any questions on that We, well, we have to um, do like like uh, so like on your other slide, on the slide that you have open. We have to graph like the x, y, and the negative two, eight, or negative one, one, like that. No, no. These are just if you wanted to graph it by hand, but you guys are not required to graph it by hand. But this is just saying, okay, these are some ordered pairs, and if you graph them by hand, it would look like this graph, and when you connected them. Thank you. Oops. So the next parent function is the square root function. So this looks like it's it's like kind of only going in one direction. We can't take square roots of we can't graph square roots with negatives because a negative inside the square root is uh, imaginary number. We can't graph that. So it's only in the positive area here. Um, and so the transformations are they're going to do the same thing it's just a different symbol so when I go to Desmos 
instead of having this parenthesis with the three here before the cubic, it would be a square root symbol. So I'm actually going to go back to what I have here. Let me turn this off. And I'm going to turn this into a square root symbol. So first I'm going to hit delete. There's this keypad here, and then this has a square root symbol. And then we have x minus h inside the square root. So uh, the parent function is the square root function if you have the square root symbol in your graph. And so this is what it looks like. So if you're adding a number, right, or if you have like x minus 2, so if you're subtracting, it moves it to the right. If it says x plus something, it moves it to the left. So anything that happens to the x is the opposite, and it's the same moving left or right, um, depending on, you know, what the number is. The number, the k that's added on, that moves up and down, just like it does for all the other ones. So that always at, moves it up or down. And then a, that number in front, that again is a stretch. So if as a gets bigger, I said that it stretches up, or it's like you're pulling it up. So you can see that that endpoint is getting higher up. So it's like it's pulling the graph, trying to pull it up closer towards the y-axis as a gets bigger. And as a gets smaller, it's flattening it out. Then if you go to the negatives, it turns it upside down, just like all the other negatives in front did for the other transformations. Having that negative in front turns it upside down. So I could have um, something, let's see, let's go back to our parent function by making this 1. And let me make a new function here. So if I add, let's say, negative 3, and then I'm going to have my square root x oops, minus 2, and then getting outside of the square root, let's do plus, let's do plus 4. So before I graph it, and I turn the graph on, so I have x minus 2. So it's going to do the opposite. That means it's going to move right towards the positive numbers by 2 units. Then I have this negative 3. So the negative means I'm going to be reflecting it upside down. And then it's going to be stretching by 3. So it's going to be um, looking closer to the y-axis. And then this plus 4 is adding 4. So it's going to be moving up and everything is based off of this zero point when we say it. So it's going to be moving right to up four. So it's going to kind of start here and then go upside down. So you can see that it moved to the right, moved up, went upside down, and it got kind of bigger because it's getting pulled closer towards the y-axis. So I can determine the transformation that's, that happened before even graphing it just by knowing what each of these numbers do to the original graph. And then uh, on my sheet here, it's just notes about the range and the, the domain. Um, if I go back to Desmos, so let's say on the blue graph, let me temporarily turn the black one off. So the range is all the y values. So um, when it's reflected upside down, your range goes from negative infinity to k, which is 4. So that's the highest value. And um, your domain goes from your h value. Our h value is 2. So it's going from 2 to infinity, because that's only where I have parts graphed. I don't have any parts graphed smaller than 2. So that's why we start at 2 as the left endpoint. So um, if you were asked to find the range or the domain, you just look at these numbers and plug in your numbers. Any questions? Not for me, no. Okay. So the next one is the cubed root. We actually don't see this one too much, and this is actually not one of the official parent functions listed in the textbook, but um, I wanted to show it just to show um, the difference from the cube. So in order, I don't even think, yeah, Desmos doesn't even graph the cubed root, so I can't even like type in the cubed root here um, because you need a special symbol. It's, you don't, that three is not an exponent on the A, it's something different. Um, but 
if you were with something the cubed root, it's like the cube function, but it's sort of on its side instead. But this next one, absolute value. So this is one of the parent functions that we've got in the textbook. So I'm going to go back to Desmos. Um, to do the absolute value, so I have to delete this square root. It's vertical bars. So it's the button um, above the enter. If you hit shift and hit that, you get a vertical bar to represent an absolute value. And so then it's x minus h. And then I have to hit that button again to finish the absolute value. Um, there's also absolute value buttons right here that you can hit that instead if you're on the, the keypad. How do you do that one more time? Sorry, I wasn't paying attention. I was writing notes. So you hit the shift and then the button above enter. It's the, the backslash button. Shift in the backslash button and that gets you. It, it shows as two um, vertical lines, but it actually makes a solid line. I don't know why the keyboard shows it not as a solid line. Or maybe that's my keyboard. Mine, show, mine shows it as a solid line, so. Okay, then maybe my keyboard just is so old, but it came off. <laughs> and it's kind of breaking up the, the, the symbol. Yeah, but it's a solid line. No, the older so, keyboards, the older keyboards did have that as two different lines, two two separate lines going down, straight up and down. Okay, so yeah, maybe I just have an older keyboard, um, but it, yeah, that's that's what gets the absolute value symbol. So the absolute value always makes a V. So you know when your parent function is an absolute value one because you have absolute values in your equation, and two, you have a V when you're looking at the graph. The transformations are exactly the same. Anything added or subtracted to h moves it left or right. So if it's subtracted, if you have x minus a number, we're moved to the right. x plus a number moves to the left. Anything added or subtracted um, at the end, that k moves it up or down. Oops. So you can see it moves it up or down just like all the other transformations. And then the, the value in front of the absolute value, so if there's a number in front of there, uh, it stretches it again. So you can see it's getting closer to the y-axis as it gets bigger, and then it flattens out as it gets smaller, and then as it goes negative, it flips it upside down. So if you see an upside down V, then that means you have a negative in front of your, your, uh, your graph. And so that would be a reflection. And so any, any, you know, any uh, equation that you have, if I had, if there's nothing in front of the absolute values, then there's no stretch or shrink, and I can have x plus 2 minus 3 here. So the plus 2 means I'm sh going to move it left by 2, and then the minus 3 means I'm down 1. So if I'm going to make my a back to 1, so it's the regular parent function. And then I turn on my other one. You can see it's moved left. So now it's at negative 2 and then down to negative 3. It has the same shape. We didn't stretch it this, case, this time because there's no number in front of the absolute value. We just moved it left and down. So that would be the transformation that occurred. And you can read that directly off of the equation. And if, there's, if you're asked any questions about where is it increasing or decreasing, the... Um, increasing part starts at your value for h. So for the blue line, that's going to be at negative 2. And then it increases as it goes to the right. So you're, you're reading the graph as you go left to right. So it's increasing to infinity. And it's asking what x values are increasing or what x values are de decreasing. The decreasing part of the graph is for negative infinity until it gets to negative 2. So when your x value hits negative 2, that's when we stopped going down from left to right, and now we're increasing. So that's the increasing and decreasing part. And then the range is just that k value, that minus 3 to infinity. That's where our y values are graphed. So that's absolute value. And I have summarized all of these also at the end of this. So again, this is in your um, your weekly content. It, it says that it's like parent functions and transformations. Um, and 
So it's in the weekly content. It describes what each of these do. Basically, any transformation, you can have these things happen. Sometimes there's numbers in front of the X. Uh, you don't see that too often. So normally you'll just see just X by itself. And then in the here we just say F because it's any function. So it could be something squared, it's something cubed, it could be an absolute value, it could be a square root. There's lots of different types of functions you can see, but the transformations that occur are the same no matter what. And so this tells you, you know, what each of those values does. And then it's basically also there's a specific order. We usually do um, X, you know, we're shifting the X left or right. Then we do the A part and then we do the K. But that's, that's what it, that's everything you need to know about function transformations is just understanding what each of these values do so that if you do see some kind of graph, um, if I pull up Desmos again, let me just make something up. So let's say we have some function h of x and let me turn this off. We had 2.5 x cubed or x cubed minus 3. So if you see something like this, the parent function is x cubed because we have an x cubed here. We are stretching it by 2.5 since that's the number in front. And because the x uh, cubed part, there's no parentheses in there, we don't have a left or right. So we just have a shift down because it's negative of 3. And then you can see that on the graph. So if you're given any function, you have to first identify the parent function based off of, okay, what's happening to x? Is it an absolute value? Is it cubed? Does it have a square root? And then you just figure out from there, are we, are we going left or right? Are we multiplying? Are we going up or down? Do you guys have any questions? Is it two and a half there, there again? The x, x, to the x cubed is the parent function. The, yeah. the negative three is down three. What's the two and a half again? That is stretching it. So I'm basically stretch the, the 2.5 means I'm multiplying all of my y values by 2.5. That's what it literally means. Um, so, but it's, we say that is a stretch of 2.5. There any other questions? That covers it for me. All right. Anybody else have any questions? Your biggest friend um, will be Desmos because a lot of the questions that you have, like even on the quiz, you can use Desmos. So if it's asking you about function transformations, you can type the equation into Desmos and then kind of look at what happens. Um, of course, you can use this as a guide as well. On, on the quiz, on the um, assignment, the question is about an absolute value because it has the absolute value symbols. So that's going to be a parent function of an absolute value, and then you're just determining what's happening to that. Um, but this is basically all you need to know, and then as long as you can graph it, you can kind of figure out everything that you from there. We don't need you to graph these by hand unless you really want to, but um, that's you know it's time consuming and it's it's not worth your time. use this on the midterm if we need it yes yes desmos is allowed on any of the quizzes and um, midterm and we're going to be doing a lot of graphing in weeks five week six week seven um, even week, week eight so basically we're going to be graphing from here on out so definitely you're going to get really good at using desmos um, you can use it on like discussions you don't need it for this week's discussion um, you can use it, you know, if you're just out of curiosity to help you determine the parent function for this week. But yeah, you can use it. It's definitely one of your resources to use when you're doing any questions using graphing or to kind of help you visualize what's going on. You can even use it to determine like X and Y intercepts as well, because if I graph one of these, when you touch it, when you click on it, it will tell you, it will label, it will put little dots at the X intercepts and the Y intercepts as well.
That's pretty cool. So we can also use that to like as like a link instead of just putting the picture on there for the like the discussion boards. We can use that for just a link to. Yes. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you can do the share this link, and if you paste that link in the discussion board, then anybody who clicks that link will take you to your picture here. Thank you. And then that's also, that's, that's very yeah, helpful. The, you can also on the discussion board. There's this thing that says embed. So when you're in the discussion, there's a little button that says HTML. So if you hit the HTML button, you can then paste this at the bottom of the HTML, and then it will also embed it so they see it without having to click. Well, too, thank you very much. I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, a lot of fancy things that you can do here. It's really nice. Anything else? That about covers it for me. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you guys for joining. Um, I appreciate that you guys could make it and that you asked questions. Um, I encourage you to mess around with Desmos. Um, if you go to Desmos's website, I'm going right now. Um, there is actually, let me just share. I should have not have stopped sharing yet. Um, so, but if you just go to the regular Desmos.com, they do have tutorials here. If you go to learn more, that will tell you how to do things. Um, and then there's like fun classroom activities if you want to do that. But actually this one here, math examples, dilation, that's basically the same thing as the stretch that we were talking about. Okay, that's really cool. People are <laughs> making pictures with Desmos as well. But there's a lot of things here and here. So they're, they're demonstrating on this one. This is the same sort of slider as that A value. They're showing how it makes it um, narrower. So other people have basically created things to help you learn transformations here. Um, and then this is showing the number that's with the X. So that's, or, you know, with the X, if there's a number in front or divided, we don't really talk about that one too much, but it's still got the left or right. So lots of people, yeah, I just do leave if you don't want to save it, but there's, there's tons of examples here. Um, that, um, so like here, there's, they, apparently they do geometry now. I did not know that. So that's pretty cool. So if we just click math examples, you can see there's a whole bunch of fun things that you can play around with just to see what's out there. Um, I've actually met the guy who, uh, who created Desmos. He's a really interesting guy, really fun guy. Um, he was like, hey, if you if you have any suggestions for me, let me know. I have his email address. So. Go, back, go back to that again, to, that, to the math examples. Yeah. That second one on the left looks really neat. On the left, going down. Oh, no, the left and going down. Okay. So that this looks one? really neat. That looks really neat. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. So this is... Has some, so they actually made it so it's animated. So this is actually using some trig and what else do they have going on here? Um, this is definitely that's something. Too much math for me going on there. That's what they got going on there. <laughs> yeah, a cardioid is something that's actually talked about in Calc two. Um, and then it it has a, what is called parametric equations. So parametric equations allow you to get like. Um, circles and things like that on something that's not really a circle. But this is really cool that it's it's animated and then it's kind of creating the shape as this, whatever this T value is, it's getting bigger. So if you just want to play around with math and just see what happens, Desmos has a lot of cool things that people have created. That is awesome. Thank you very yeah. much. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, polar equations, polars, that's all um, calculus stuff. Simpson's rules, calculus, solids of revolution is calculus. There's a lot of stuff for calculus here. So um, approximating pi, that's actually kind of cool. Um, yeah, just fun stuff. All right, so that's, that's all I've got for you guys. <laughs> Thank you very much. You have a great day. You too. I will see you guys next week. Definitely. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.